When you get into the special operations community, whether it's Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, Ground Branch, whatever, you're dealing with some individuals that have a big ego. Raging type A man, very competitive. The guys that had the egos, in my opinion, thought they were at the top of the top of the food chain. And maybe they were there, but to the true professional, you can always get better. You can't say, I know it all. I'm as strong as I can get. I'm running as fast as I can. That's bullshit. 1% better every day. 1%, 1%, 1%. That's what I kind of consider ego is when somebody can look at you in the eye and be like, I can't get any better. That's ego. Big ego, that can get you hurt. Even in business, if you think you're unfat, you can't screw with me until there's a thing called tactical patience, right? Um, it's a great term and it's, you got to know when to kind of put the brakes on and go, okay, just stop and just watch, right? Just hold on. Like everybody take a knee and chill. All right, now move. Like, and and that's something that I learned over time. I didn't even know what that was when I was in the Marines and SF. Like, tactical patience, what the fuck? You know, I learned it there. That's what guys that are really, really good, they can, instead of just rushing into something and just, you know, overwhelming force, that's great at certain times, but there's a time we got to put the brakes on to go, all right, s just slow down for a second. Yeah. Let this unfold. Let it unfold. Let it unfold. Okay, ready, and that mm. is a learned skill. And that comes with a lot of maturity. And I didn't have that until, to be quite honest with you, the very latter end of my career. Yeah. Really? Yeah, man. It takes a lot. It takes a lot to get to get that good. And I was just lucky I was around a bunch of dudes that already had it. Do you know what I mean? So it's just kind of like, you know, I, like I was telling you before, it's like playing basketball with a bunch of, you know, Michael Jordans or LeBron James. Yes. It's like every freaking guy, Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, like, you know, and I loved it because it just upped my game. And, and you know what the sad thing is and when it when it comes to training and stuff, it, it's a lot of guys just can't park their freaking ego. Mm. Like, I don't want to go to the range with this guy because he can outshoot me. Well, Pick his brain and find out why. Yeah. You know, like I got a chance to train with Jerry Barnhart when I was in Ground Branch. I trained with the guy for two weeks. It was a week, uh, one week of pistol, one week of carbine. And Jerry Barnhart, back in the day, he was like a 10 time world Ipsic champion, right? I think his nickname was Jerry the Burner Barnhart. Unbelievable shooter. Like, couldn't compete with the guy. But when you, when you have the opportunity to train with a practitioner, practitioner, not a hobbyist, right? And that's mm -hmm. what I kind of have a hard on for guys online that quote that they can teach stuff. They're not practitioners, they're hobbyists. And we can get into that if yeah, you want. Yeah, can you explain how Absolutely. you do Absolutely. But I got to train with Jerry Barnhart and, you know, this guy took my shooting to the next level. Why? Because he was just that freaking good. That's how I got my draw under... Yep, there this he is right there. The That's him. Yes, sir. That's him. Okay. Super, super nice guy. Very humble. He was um, in the military before? Uh I don't believe I don't believe Jerry was. He was oh. just a world, he was just a world class pistol shooter. Wow. And the thing that I I respected about him even more so is that he was so good at conveying this here. Like yeah, I know for a lot of people just I, listening, not watching. What yeah, so um you can be a really good shooter or really good tennis player or really good golfer, really good, world-class. But if you can't verbalize how you're that good, you're basically useless as an instructor. And I know guys like that. Right. I know guys are amazing operators. They don't have the patience or the ability to, to verbalize what you need to do to get that good. He was a master at it. That's where I got my draw under a, under a second, going to his course. Whoa. Yeah. It, I, yeah, it was under a second. And, you know, <clears throat> I, to this day, I don't shoot enough. I still can't break a second. I can do like 1 1.2, 1 1.3. That's unbelievably fast. Though. That's respectable. But when you're under a second, that's that's yeah that's pretty fast yeah if i tried but, that someone's dying it's it's pretty fast <laughs> not who but, i'm trying to shoot either <laughs> but you got to remember though <laughs> but what you have to remember is you have to train with a guy like that to get that good i can't train with a guy at my level yeah. or lower i gotta train with a dude like that and so people that are listening who whatever your sport or whatever it is you want to be good at seek these people out 
Seek yeah. these people out, and that's how you're going to really get good. And and for the guys listening, park your freaking ego, okay? Don't don't be like, well, you know, yeah, this guy's a much better shooter than me, and I don't want to embarrass me. No, I want you to embarrass me. 